Well, here we are at Zoomtopia um, here in the content studio on the showroom floor. I'm Joseph Chong, head of product solutions in industry marketing, and I'm here with Mu, our chief development officer. And we're here to talk, of course, about the hot topic of AI. All right. Happy to be here. Thank you, Mu. Um, Mu, I got to ask you, what excites you the most about AI innovation? AI is actually quite amazing, especially with uh, the development of generative AI in the past 20 years. Uh, it opened up so many possibilities. Uh, just look at what we have delivered with uh, AI companion, with uh, meeting summary. There are so many things that we can enable for people to have more effective meetings and save a lot of time and have really good follow-up after meetings. I can imagine that a lot of our customers will really enjoy those features and in the future, we can even do more. Like instead of just giving them a summary, telling them an answer, we can help them to finish tasks even after meeting. So I think the boost to productivity will be huge for everyone. That's great. I've been hearing a lot of positive feedback about time saved and productivity gains yeah. as a result of some of these use cases. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side, Mu, what, what concerns you about AI? Um, my main concern about AI is uh, all the possible misuses in the future. So uh, today you can see that AI is very powerful, especially when people start to use AI to generate audio, video in any way and form they want. Right? They can, some players can start to uh, fake video, pretending to be someone else. Yeah. And if that gets into the hands of fraudsters, the fraud cases can be really hard to detect. And in those cases, I guess, for technology providers like us, when these kind of fraud cases happen in the future, how do we detect that? How do we warn our users about it? How do we make sure the technologies are used in a safe and tra transparent manner? That's, like, that's one of the concerns I have. Yeah, good. I'm glad, I'm glad you're thinking about that and how to detect those cases because they do yeah. uh, pose some risk um, when, when you read about them in, in, in the media. Right. Um, Mu, you're, you're Chief Development Officer at, at Zoom. What advice can you give to other technology leaders at other companies about how to drive AI within, within their organizations? Mm. I guess the first thing is to try our best to stay on top of the development in this space. Uh, it's actually quite amazing. Every week, there's some major news about new development in large language model or generative AI in general. Um, we should try our best to stay on top of the news and the papers as much as we can. What we don't have enough bandwidth, we need to have, uh, we need to f hire the right talent so that we can have a team of people who will try to follow up and stay on top of the latest development in the industry. And this is one part of it that just know for sure what's feasible. And then second is to map the feasibility into customer scenarios, because we know our business best. We know what the customers want. And how do we map what's feasible today or what will be feasible in the next six months into our customer scenarios? That will be the main thing we need to think about every day. Good. Amuk, can I ask you, um, personally, what do you, what do you do to kind of keep up with this wave of generative AI technologies? Uh, definitely follow some news sources and also read papers. I have like uh, um, friends, I follow them and then uh, they post very nice articles, pointers. I just read them as much as I can. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, now, when you're implementing AI technologies, what are the, what are the biggest barriers that you faced? The biggest barrier we faced is actually all the um, uh, privacy concerns that people may have. Um, right now, um, AI is quite sensitive. People are always worried about um, how we use the data. Yeah. Um, will the data be leaked in the future? So we need to make sure when we build product features using AI, we need to be totally transparent. We need to tell users exactly when AI features are starting and exactly how we're going to use our data so that I can feel comfortable using our product. That includes all the meeting participants, including even people who are using older clients. Yeah. So for us, it's actually a really interesting challenge to make sure both customers using the latest client and also customers using older clients 
to get proper notification about AI usage, and they, they need to feel comfortable about using it. Good, good, good. Now, Mu, when you're, you're, you're looking five years into the future about um, AI technologies, what, what are some things that excite you um, about the vision ahead? There is actually one exciting thing I'm uh, ex uh, looking forward to. Uh, you know, the, in the real-time communication world, um, technology, foundation technology has been going through a major transition in the past five years. So the, we have been uh, shifting from traditional digital signal processing to AI model-based processing. So in the future, what will happen is that all the audio-video signal will be processed by AI model the information will be extracted out and sent to the other side, and then the audio-video uh, signals will be reconstructed or generated out of another AI model. Through that process, actually we can add translation into that as well. If we could do real-time translation through that process, uh, imagine there'll be no more language barrier when we talk to anyone else in the world. That can open up like huge amount of opportunities, both from business point of view, and also from just having better connections for humanity. So finally, maybe we can build the, the Tower of Babel. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very exciting future. I think it could happen in the next five to 10 years. That's amazing. That sounds like something out of science fiction or, or, or Star Trek. Um, so it's exciting to know that that might be right around the corner. Yeah. Well, Mu, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I know uh, we have to get back to the show floor. So with that, um, appreciate your time and, uh, Get back out there. Cool. Thank you.